Hi everyone and thanks for watching my online lesson on circle theorems. So circle theorems is a topic under angles and it only appears on higher tier. I'm first going to start by showing you all of the circle theorems and showing you them in different images and how they can look in different situations and then I'm going to go through some exam questions. So if you already know all of your circle theorems feel free to skip ahead to the exam questions part of this video. Okay, so when I teach circle theorems, I'll always describe it as almost like the angles in parallel lines topic, in that there's a few different scenarios you need to know. Um, they can look very different, so we might teach it that you're looking for a Z angle, for alternate angles, but it doesn't always look like a Z shape, it can be stretched out, so there's different scenarios to watch out for. And also, if you're wanting full marks on these questions, you need to know the sentences that go with them, such as alternate angles are equal, because they can ask you to state the reason for every step of your working. So circle theorems is very similar to this, but we have more to learn. So this is the most basic circle theorem, and this is that the angle formed in a semicircle is always a right angle. So here I have a semicircle because this is a diameter of the circle, and any angle formed in here that touches the circumference will be a right angle. So they can look like this as well, any diameter and any angle inside. That is always a right angle. Here's our next circle theorem. This is that angles from the same arc in the same segment are equal. So if you start with any arc, so this is the arc I've started with here, and take um, a point on either side of the arc, so there and there, and then draw an angle touching the circumference and any other angle touching the circumference, those angles will be equal. And by the same theorem, this arc here, I have two angles created at the circumference from this arc, which is down here, they will also be equal. So that's that there and that there. It doesn't always look like this shape. Some teachers say it looks like a bow tie. Um, and this one here definitely does look like a bow tie, but they can be very stretched out examples like this one here um, and very extreme examples to look out for. The next circle theorem is that the angle at the centre of a circle is twice the angle at the circumference of the circle from the same arc. So if we start with an arc, so this is my arc here, and I draw an angle at the centre, that angle I have created will be twice the size of the angle at the circumference from that very same arc. So we can see that here. This is the classic scenario for this one. But it doesn't always look like this. In this example, I have a major arc. So this is the arc here, and I've created an angle at the center. So it's this one here. That will be double the angle created at the circumference from this same arc. So watch out for this example and also this one here. Not to be confused with the last circle theorem we did, here we have an angle at the centre and an angle at the circumference from this very same arc. So that's double this one. Another circle theorem is that the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral will add up to 180 degrees. So a cyclic quadrilateral is any quadrilateral where all of the vertices touch the circumference of a circle. So the opposite angles will add up to 180. Common mistake students make with this is that they think they're equal, they're not. They add up to 180. So this here and this here. With this example, I've combined two circle theorems together. So the first circle theorem here is that a tangent to a circle will always be perpendicular or at a right angle to a radius drawn at the point of contact. So any tangent, if we then, where it touches a circle, draw a radius, that will form a 90 degree angle. Now, this second circle theorem very often attaches to that one. You very rarely see the second one without seeing the first one. And that's that two tangents drawn from the same point are equal in length. So this tangent here, and this one here, because they've been drawn from the same point, are equal in length. So it's very rare you see the second one without the first one. And same again here, 
we've got this tangent and this tangent will be equal in length and because these are both radii it will be 90 degree angles either side. And this is the last and most complicated circle theorem. It's the one students very often forget about and it makes it a much higher level question. And this is that the angle between a tangent, so this is my tangent here, and a chord is equal to the angle at the circumference in the alternate segment. So it's saying that this angle here is equal to this one and this angle here is equal to this one here. Really what you're looking out for is any triangle drawn inside the circle where the vertices touch the circumference and then a tangent at that point at one of the vertices and it's these alternate angles are equal. So it almost looks like alternate angles in parallel lines but obviously this isn't parallel to this. So definitely one to watch out for. Okay, let's start to look at some exam questions then. So I'm going to start with some very basic ones. So this is just a quick two mark question. It says that A, B and C are points on the circumference of the circle and O is the centre. So A, C is the diameter of the circle. And it just says write down the size of angle A, B, C. So this is telling me it's not something that really needs calculating. It's something I should know. And this is our first circle theorem that the angle in a semicircle is a right angle. So ABC is 90 degrees. And then it says, give a reason for your answer. So here I need to write that the angle formed in a semicircle is always a right angle. Just be careful how you word your circle theorems. I've worded this slightly differently to how I stated it before, but I'm still saying that an angle in a semicircle is a right angle. I don't have to say the angle formed in a semicircle is a right angle. But if you start shortening these down and being lazy and just writing angle in a semicircle, you might not get full marks. So try and learn the circle theorems as I've given them to you. Okay, part B of this question is another fairly simple one. So we've got that D, E and F are points on the circumference and the centre is O and the angle D, O, F is 130 degrees work out the size of angle DEF. So angle DEF is this one up here. Now I know that an angle at a circumference is half of the angle at the centre from the same arc. So this angle here is half of 130, so it's 65 degrees. And again, the next part is give a reason for your answer. So I'm gonna have to state the circle theorem that I've just said. So there we go, the angle at the centre is twice the angle at the circumference from the same arc. Okay, let's look at a slightly harder question now. So this is um, A, B, C and D are points on the circumference of a circle and O is the centre. And then it just tells me that angle B, A, D is 70, B, O, D is X and B, C, D is Y. I've just cut the question off here so that I could make my diagram bigger. And the question was, find the value of X and find the value of Y. So first I'm going to find the value of X. And again here, it's the same circle theorem I've just used. This is an angle at um, the circumference and this is an angle at the centre from the same arc. So angle X must be double of 70, so angle X is 140. Now I'm going to find angle Y, so what circle theorem do I know here about my diagram? Well I've actually got a cyclic quadrilateral here, so that is my cyclic quadrilateral. And I know that the opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180 degrees. So my 70 and my y add up to 180, which means that y must be 110 degrees. Just be very careful here. I'm going to show you on this diagram. A lot of students will think that this here is their cyclic quadrilateral and we'll say that x and y add up to 180. Don't fall into that trap, just think it's got to touch the edge of the circle and that doesn't, it touches the centre, so these do not add up to 180. Okay, let's look at a different question with some different circle theorems. So I've got um, a, b and c are points on the circumference of a circle. 
O is my centre. It says that AD is a straight line and it's also a tangent to the circle. Now, as I've read that, I know that a tangent meets a radius at a 90 degree angle. So this is a tangent and they've told me that here. And then this is a radius because they've told me this is a centre. So, so before I even read what the question is, I'm going to mark on that that angle there is 90 degrees. It might be useful, probably will be, but I'm going to mark it on once I've realised. So it says that angle ADO is 36 degrees, which is marked on the diagram anyway. And the first question is work out the size of angle AOD. So that's AOD, so it's this angle here. Now, don't forget, you can also use other angle facts. We're not always looking for circle theorems. And here I have a right angle triangle. So angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. This is 90, so I have used a circle theorem there. So this angle here must be 54 degrees. I'm going to mark that on my diagram. Okay, the next question says work out the size of angle ABC. So angle ABC is ABC. It's this one here. Now this is AC, my arc, and I have an angle at the centre. And then from this very same arc, I have an angle at the circumference. So this is, this angle here is twice the size of this angle here. So the size of angle ABC is 27 degrees. And then the last part says give a reason for your answer. So I need to formally state what that circle theorem is. So that's that the angle at the centre is twice the angle at the circumference from the same arc. Here's the last example that I'm going to do and it's a slightly harder question this time. So we've got that P, Q and T are points on the circumference of the circle. O is the centre. The line ATB is a tangent to the circle. PQ and TQ are the same length. And angle ATP is 58 degrees. Now all of that is on the diagram for me. I'm just going to double check that I know everything in that information from the diagram and I do. Now the question is calculate the size of angle OTQ. So I'm just going to start by marking on OTQ is this angle here. That's what the question is asking me to find. Now, what circle theorems do we have here that could help me? Well, my first one is they've given me a tangent to the circle, so that tangent must be important. And they've actually given me a radius to that tangent. So I'm going to mark on that this angle here is 90 degrees, and so is the angle on the other side. Now, if that angle on the other side is a 90 degree angle, and this part is 58, then this here must be 32 degrees. Now, if you just read the question here, it says, give a reason for each stage in your working. So if I want full marks on this question, I'd have to say, how do I know that? I'd have to say that a tangent meets a radius at a 90 degree angle. Now, I don't have space to write down all these sentences here, but you would need to write that down to get full marks. So that's the first step. Now, where do I go from here? Now this is where a lot of students will struggle and get stuck because it's a hard circle theorem to spot and it's the one that I did last, it's the alternate segment theorem. I have a triangle here inside my circle where the vertices touch the circumference and I also have a tangent at one of these vertices here at the bottom. So this angle here, this 58, is alternate to angle PQT up here. So this angle is 58 and my reason that I would state would be the alternate segment theorem and that's why PQT is 58 degrees. So I'm going to mark that on there. So a difficult one to spot but you need to remember you have that circle theorem to use as well. Now the next fact that I'm going to use isn't actually a circle theorem. It's this isosceles triangle that I have. So my angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So angle QPT and angle QTP combined, I'm just going to do 180 take away 58, they must add up to 122 degrees. 
Now, because they're the same size, if I divide that by 2, that's 61 degrees. So this angle here is 61 degrees. And so is all of this angle here. And now you can see why I've used different colours to help you see that. So that angle there is 61 degrees. Again, I need to give a reason for that stage in my working. And my reason there is that the base angles of an isosceles triangle are equal. Okay, my final step of working out, if that entire angle PTQ is 61 degrees and angle PTO is 32, then the angle I'm trying to find, which is marked in green on my diagram, OTQ, must be 61, take away 32, which is 29 degrees. And that's that question complete. So that's a slightly more complicated question with more steps in. And um, alternate segment theorem to watch out for. Questions do get more complex than this and there are circle theorem proofs to consider as well which are much more complex still um, but basically with circle theorem it's all about practicing and you need to really get your hands on some exam questions and practice recognizing them, saying the statements and looking for different properties and different angles you can find. You just need to practice, practice, practice. Thank you for watching.